like a wall. Surround us, O Lord, surround us. For you said you would surround us with a wall of fire. Surround us, surround us, surround us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Surround each one. Surround each home. Surround each one of this family, I pray. With a wall of fire. Yes, Lord. Send your angels to camp around us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bring us near. Draw us to yourself. rise again so our spirits can be lifted again so our hearts can be melted again for you have called us to soar yes Lord called us to soar
mind, but our strength, our bodies. Let your healing flow. Let there be a restoring of our bodies also. Healer. 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 Healer art thou. Restore not only of our faith, of our mind, but of our bodies also. So Lord, we look to you for the restoring of strength, of sickness, of the bones, of the body. We look to you because the power of your love also includes the stripes on your back which are made by love so that we might be healed. So Lord, we ask the power of your love will reach those that have needs in their body, in their bones, restoration in their bodies, strength by the power of your love. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold us close. Surround us by the power of your love. In our bodies, be filled. Let them be mended. Let whatever the enemy has ripped, let it be. Whether it be a body or in soul or in the household, let it be mended, let it be healed, relationships. All my life you have been faithful. He will not fail us or forsake us, ever. And will hold us to the last breath. Will deliver us from all our enemies. deliver us from sickness, He will deliver us from trials, He will deliver us from the hands of our enemies, He will deliver us from the prisons, He will deliver us from evil, He will not forsake us, for as it is written, he has us engraved, engraved our name, our family, our descendants, because we are his. He will never, never forsake us. I want to speak about three scenes in the last days of Jesus's ministry. The first scene or scenario was Jesus, he was staying at the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus and that was in Bethany, the town, little town of Bethany. And he would be going towards Jerusalem, <clears throat> but to reach Jerusalem, he had to go up a mountain and then as he was coming up the top of the mountain, he could see Jerusalem down there on the road coming from Beth Bethany, down the valley. And as he looked towards Jerusalem, he did something that he might have done many times because he did do that road from Bethany to Jerusalem and climbing over the mountain and seeing Jerusalem down there. 
but it's written only two times and one the week before Passover before the cross <clears throat> the first time that Jesus did this was when he saw his dead friend Lazarus there were not very many people that could claim being a friend of Jesus but Lazarus was one of them and it says that when Jesus was there in front of the tomb of Lazarus he wept he cried and in this scene we see the second time that Jesus cried it meant that something was very heavy upon his heart and we see this scene in Luke 19 verse 41 it says when he was come near he beheld the city of Jerusalem and he wept over it <clears throat> saying if you had known even you at last at least in this your day the things which belong to your peace but now they are hid from your eyes at least in this your day how important some things are and these things that are so important are our peace but you can't see it things that belong to our peace and to the church things that the church cannot see that belong to its peace Jesus obviously was very aware of what was going to happen in Jerusalem soon and the terrible situation and destruction of the city and of the temple which was the church their church and that they would face the killing of more than one million Jews Jesus knew that the people didn't that day and he could see all those storms in the future but he said if you knew how important this day is and it has to do with your peace in the world there are things that are important and always will be important such as faithfulness worship loving seeking God all things that we have learned that pleases God and that has changed us but there are things that are lacking that pertain to your peace and there are treasures that belong to this time in which we're living though terrible a time there are things there are treasures there are treasures that God has for these times but we're not seeing them perhaps because those treasures are tied to events that will happen in the future but we must discover and not let them be hidden because these treasures are for our future peace and you might not be aware of these treasures or how to obtain them perhaps you think we might have to pray more or fast more or do this or do that to obtain these treasures that are awaiting us but no these treasures for these times will not be found by you they will be found by others in the world and those others that will discover those treasures must be helped to find those treasures we've just come for those that do not know we have just come from a month of ministry accompanied by a team from our church here in Atlanta and that's what we have done we have helped others to find those treasures that we have found in our past that have to do with their peace that have to do with events even future events in the world today there are things that are much more important now that must happen before those future events can come to pass and there will be great opposition as we heard today for those that are in charge of taking that message today looking at what's happening in the world the wars the rumors of wars Israel Europe and what will affect us here and in this nation 
But now those things are not important because there are things much more important than the wars and rumors of wars. So now I want us to look at the second scene of the last days of Jesus. We find that in Matthew chapter 1. Uh, chapter 21, I'm sorry. Matthew 21 and verse 2. Jesus told some of his disciples, he said, saying to them, go into a village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. He said, you're going to find a mother donkey and her colt. And he said, I want you to loose them and bring them to me. And verse 3, if any man say anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And straightway, he will let them go. He will send them. All this was done, verse 4, that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophet, saying, tell you the daughter of Zion, and behold, your king comes to you, meek, and sitting on an ass and a colt, the foal of the ass. The ass or donkey in the scriptures has been a figure of God's people, or the church, rather. And the colt, then, is a figure of the next generation of the church. The ass is the church. The little one is the future church. For a king to come into the city, it was custom that a conquering king would come to the city if he came riding on a horse, he was coming for war. If he came on a donkey, he was coming for peace. Because that was a symbol to the city. And Jesus came riding on a donkey saying that he was a king, but he was coming in peace. Which was very unusual, though, what Jesus did, because he didn't come riding on the mother. He came riding on the colt, which was unusual because the colt had not been ridden before his mother had. Very strange, very unusual. She had been ridden, and it was her honor, the one you'd think that Jesus would choose. well accustomed to having a heavy weight to go wherever the one that was on her would lead there or speak or whisper or a move of the knees was enough for an old seasoned donkey carrying people but he commanded the disciples not only to loosen the mother but to loosen the colt also because it was a job for both of them to do. He didn't leave, say, leave the mother tied. All I need is the colt, because I'm going to come riding on a colt. But why did he say, loose the mother and bring her also? Jesus was not despising the mother. The mother was to be part of that triumphal entry. But it would be upon her child that he would enter. And you know the story how the disciples put their mantles and how the people brought branches crying out Hosanna to the king taking off their clothes and lining the path for the donkey and Jesus. Then we read of course when they got to Jerusalem they turned the table of the money changers. He was judging the religious system of the temple. So he came riding upon the true church, not upon the religious church. And the temple and everything that happens there represents what the church should be but isn't and has become religious, full of liturgy, hypocrisy, and no relationship with God. That's why I turned the tables. But I want to bring your attention to the verse 15 
of Matthew 21. It says, when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. The children were in the temple. The people were going up the mountain towards Jesus to meet him. They thought, of course, the priests and the scribes, that the temple with the priests and the trumpets, that they had the perfect way, the perfect praise. But Jesus had very strange words for them when they were displeased at seeing the children there outside of the temple crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. He was saying that the children that were crying Hosanna to the king, Jesus said, these are the true worshipers, these children. Remember that the parents were going up the mountain to receive Jesus, and they too were saying Hosanna and putting down, putting down their cloaks before Jesus, making a special road for him to trod. They, of course, had told their children, you stay here, this is an adult stuff, an adult thing. We go meet Jesus. You, you, you just stay here by the temple and wait for us. We know how to receive the king. We do it the right way. We put our mantles down before him. Now the children, they heard Hosanna. They saw them waving, and they did the same. But of course, the priests would have nothing about it. They weren't adults. They were just children. And it was true. Jesus didn't say, To the adults, please step aside. I want to hear the children praise, praise me. He didn't do that. No, they came and they met Jesus. They cried out, Hosanna, the parents did. They took off their cloaks. I'm sure he smiled at them. I don't think he frowned at them. They, what are you doing? He smiled at them, but I don't think they were aware of the symbolism of what he did. I wonder if they even stop to think, why is he not riding on the mother? Why is the mantle that was the anointing of the disciples, why did they put their mantle and their anointing over the colt? And why was Jesus riding on the colt, which was much smaller, maybe his feet were almost touching the floor? No, they didn't notice that. They were too busy taking off their coats and seeing how Jesus would respond to their action. I'm sure the disciples also wondered when Jesus said, Put your mantles and I'll sit on them. And they went towards the mother and Jesus said, no, not the mother. And they looked and said, on the cold? He has been ridden, Jesus. He might start jumping and bucking and throwing you off. He's never been ridden, Jesus. Jesus said, I said, put your anointing, your mantles on the child, the colt. Okay. And they took their mantle. But I wonder if the people realized what was happening. The children at the temple crying out Hosanna. Jesus, no doubt, listening to it by what he answered to them. I wonder if they understood the symbolism of what was to happen that he chose the new generation, but did not reject the older generation, but had her alongside the new generation. Then we see the words he answered the scribes that were scolding the children that were left behind. As the older worshipers brought Jesus slowly from the temp from the mount 
to the temple. And as Jesus walked by the children, they cried out what their fathers and mothers were crying out. But as I said, this displeased the chief, the priests, the scribes, and Jesus quoted them the scriptures. Matthew 21, 16 said to them, do you hear what they say? And Jesus said, yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, you have perfected praise? Strange words, perfected praise. Perhaps not a mature praise. Perhaps not even a beautiful voice praise. Perhaps not even a correct praise. But he said, the praise is perfect. Perfected to the eyes of God and thus to the ears of Jesus. It was pleasing. I've always wondered what roles the children would play in the future of the church. We really don't know. In the third scene that I want us to see, that also happened at the same time frame, we find in Matthew 23 and verse 37, this time, He's saying, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killed the prophets and stoned them that are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and you would not. How often, often would I have gathered your children, but you would not. Maybe they thought the children didn't have a place. Perhaps they thought that they could never become worshipers and praisers. Or that really they were not the important ones. Although yes, one day they might grow up to be worshipers and praisers as their parents. But he said, how often I would have wanted to gather these children. He didn't say the adults. He didn't say the chief, the priests. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killed the prophets and stoned them. Which, how often would I have gathered your children together? Like in Psalm 91, which talks about being under the shadow of the Almighty, being under his wings. The whole chapter 91 says why it's important as you read the terrible things that it describes happening, troubles, wars, people dying. He's saying his angels I need to send to protect you for what is going to happen. He says thousands are going to fall at one side and 10,000 are going to fall on the other side of you. That's war, that's blood, that's death. The whole psalm have to do with very difficult times. And it starts by saying there must be a people abiding under his wings. And if we put these three scenes together, then we see developing that there are things that belong to the future peace that today you cannot see or that are not in your eyesight today, but they are very important for your peace. And that the younger generation, the children, are called to be under the wings. The adults obviously know they were children at one time and they learned to run for refuge, but the children haven't. You need to have the chickens there, the little chicks there also, because there's treasures 
that belong to your peace. And things you need to have that can only be found under the shadow of the Almighty. The treasures can only be found. People will look for treasures and look for things, but they're all there in one place where people do not want to go, do not want to stay, do not want to search. That's where the treasures are. That's where I and my wife found the treasures. Under the shadow of the Almighty, under his wings, in his presence, we discovered treasures. And he's calling the children to come and find the treasures under his wings. And he said, how I have longed to bring, like a hen brings her chicks, and when they're in some danger, she does, pluck, 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 and they just come running. Brrr, I know I've had chickens. And they all come and run, 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 run to keep up with her. And then there's a dog or a cat or something up here. They all go, brrr, hide under his wings. The things that you need to have cannot be found outside, no matter how much faith or prayer, or Bible study. Those things could only be found in the shadow of the Almighty under his wings. And you won't have those unless those treasures are discovered by the cults. As we have begun to discover even more than the treasures that we have known, as we have seen the cults come with us under the shadow of the Almighty, under the wings, and we've seen them come out with these treasures. Well, where did you get that from? Wow, I haven't seen that before. Treasures that we won't have that belong to this time they will be discovered by the cults. Treasures that he has reserved for the next generation, like he had reserved for our generation. Every generation has the tools it needs, the knowledge it needs, the help it needs, the power it needs, the gifts it needs, the treasures it needs, the wisdom it needs. Every generation, the needs have been different. And the next generation, the things that we have that have served us for the past of the generation, many of them will be a legacy to fall back on, but will not be sufficient. Just like in every generation, as we look back in the church, he revealed things. He gave them things that the former generation did not have like the treasure that was reserved for our generation when we started. He had wonderful things to give us and show us, and he gave us. He also has these things to give to our children, to the next generation, treasures, anointings, gifts, things that will be needed for their peace, things that they are lacking. And even in our treasures are lacking, but we do not need them because we will not be all the way in their journey. Now is the time to gather the chicks under his wings. Not just the chicks here, but the chicks of all the world, of God's people all over the world is the time to not say it's not their time, let them stand and wait for us in the temple as we worship. No. He says, yes, thank you, I acknowledge your worship. But bring the chicks. It's the colt that I need today. In other words, 
It's a responsibility of the church. It's a responsibility as it was to the mother of that colt to rear him, take care of him. And there he was standing by his mother, bound. Why? Because the mother knew what it was to have to stay there and wait for her master. So she wouldn't be tugging and trying to break the rope, but the, but the colt would want to go tramping and looking, so he had to be tied tightly. The mother symbolically. You know, like we've seen a, a Western and they come with the horse and they just throw the rein and it flips around once or twice on the, on the pole. You say, well, that's stupid. The, all you have to do, the, house is to, the horse is to walk backwards and that thing's going to slip off the pole. No need because the horse knows very well. The master is saying, just stay here. Okay. No need to tie a knot. Just, that's it. A couple of rounds. I know what I have to do. She took care of him. She gave him milk since it was a tiny little newborn babe. She reared him. So your quest and your biggest job in these times, church of the world, is to make this happen. And that will happen through your prayers, through your intercessions. And even if you do not have children, you need to be involved for the next generation. As it says in Isaiah 54, 1, Sing, O barren, that did not have children. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You that never gave birth or had travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. In other words, the call is to the church, to the adult church, to the praising church, to the church that survived the last generation and the wars and the tribulations and the trials and the troubles. He said, it's your responsibility now to bring with you a new generation that will take your place. You are the mother. You are the church of today that must take that burden knowing that you and I will go so far but that we are limited and that God has prepared for the new generation that was belongs and will belong to their peace. Just like we received what's real, what was for our peace. And like a mother, we must take that burden of taking them to the treasure room. Like we did even going out of our comfort zone this past month and like we just heard the testimony suffering, the long trips, the jet lag, the sicknesses, the weariness, the adaptation to strange foods, the customs, the weather. Why do we go out? Because it's what pertains to their peace. And they are not ready. They need to be shown the way to the shadow of the Almighty. They need to be brought by the hand and taken to the place where they can receive what they need in the future. And we can only bring them so far. Our gifts are only limited to our time and what we need. We have no idea because what we have can reach only so far. 
but the time they will live beyond us, they will need far more because the times they will go through, the times Jerusalem would live through will be much different than the ones they have lived up to that day. So the church, you and the rest of the church, thank you for suffering our absence, but thank you for sustaining us with your prayers. Because certainly we felt the undergirding of strength that was not ours, knowing that your prayers were with us, but knowing also that the law of David said, the spoil shall be divided among those that went to battle with the ones that stayed and kept the city. So may the colts be released and help them in their battles. How? By releasing them from the ropes that keep them tied so they can be used in this very important time. If they had not loosed the colt, he never could have been used to bring Jesus to the temple. So help them. They cannot release themselves because they are needed for the peace, not for world peace, but for the peace of the church. The peace of his church in our city, in our nation. And they will bear the burdens for us. But you must also take upon you as the church the burden to pray, not only for our cults, but for the cults of other churches in other nations so that they might be released. And that's why we've gone. That's why we've prayed. That's why we've suffered. That's why we've made this trip to release. And oh, how wonderful it's been to see the cults free. Lord willing, we will be having here a camp slash seminary here in Atlanta from June the 24th to July the 7th. So I make the announcement for the churches that are hearing us in other parts of the world. And in July, we'll be having another camp in Manchester, England, from people from Europe and young people the 18th of July to the 21st, the 18th of June till the 21st. No, I'm sorry, July 18th to 21st is here. No, June 24th to July 7th, thank you. And Manchester will be July the 18th to the 21st. And Lord willing, we and perhaps others might be traveling there also. So not only the colt had to be untied, but Jesus might be placed upon them so he could lead them where he wants them to be. See, Jesus was the rider. The disciples were the sidekicks. It was Jesus and the colt. And the disciples walked on one side and the other side, and perhaps in back and perhaps even in front. But the one that was traveling on a journey where he wanted to go was Jesus. He was leading that colt. And that colt would learn to be led. Back at scene number three that we were looking at, Jesus said, and this is recorded in Luke 19, 43, for the day shall come on you where your enemies shall cast a trench about you and compass you 
around and keep you in on every side and shall lay you even with the ground and your children within you and they shall not leave in you one stone on another because you knew not the time of your visitation. He said, Ty, the days will come. It's not now. It would be almost 40 years later and this cult would most probably become the parent of the next generation before they would see this. So concentrate on the things that need to be do, done now. Pray for the cults. Look for them, find them, release them. And as cults, as young cults, you will loose them and they will prance around and prance along and get caught on the rope again. Oh, yes. I was released and it wasn't very long before I was bound again. So what do you do, you stupid little colt? Look what you did. You got caught again. You fell again. I don't see any hope for you, little colt. I'm glad God didn't think that way about me. He would set me free and it wasn't pretty long before I got tangled up again. Release them and when they get bound again, release them again. Encourage them. Tell them, yeah, you might find, fall a couple of times. But God's chosen you. He will be with you. He will use you. And you will get entangled. And he will release you again. And bring them to the master. And God will do the rest. Jesus sent them to a very specific place, to a village. They think they know the name of it. They're not sure because there's two that might have been close to Bethany. He didn't say, okay, go out and whatever cult you find, loose them. He did not. He said, go to where I send you. There's a colt there, and there's a mother there, and that's the one I'm calling. That's the one I'm using. Saying to them, go into the village over against you, and straight with Faye you will find an ass tied and colt with her. Loose them and bring them to him. Every single house and every single village almost had a colt and a donkey. It's like saying, go until you find a car in a garage. There's a car in every garage, in every driveway. No, he said, go to this village. And when you find it, loose them and bring them to me. Not asking well, look, uh, Jesus needs a colt here. Who's the owner? Maybe a neighbor will come out. Oh, Jesus is looking to use a colt. Oh, I've got this lovely colt. He has a nice DNA. I, I take him to the temple every week. I pray with him every day. I think he even knows how to pray. He so, says, hee-haw, hee-haw. Oh, you have to take my colt. He's a special cold. Please untie my cold. Almost every mother I know has a cold that needs to be untied, untied at one time or another in their life. I know because they come to me, Pastor John, will you pray for my child? He needs to be untied. Oh, he's a nice person. He's kind of rebellious, you know, now. 
but, but, but pray for him. And I know he's a nice boy. He has good potential. He belongs to the devil right now, but, but you know, he, his father's a doctor, his mother's an architect. And, and I know he'll, there's big, big, big potential in him. Come untie my colt. No, he chooses the colts. And generally, he doesn't choose the best. Here I am. I rest my case. He chose me. He chose you. He chooses the colts and the mother. Now I want you to note that Jesus was staying in the house of Mary. She had a donkey too. If you have a donkey, you also have a colt. Because that's what they're there for. It was their friends. But he didn't say here, use Lazarus' colt. He's my friend. No, no, no. Total stranger. Total unknown colt and unknown mother. He says, go here. That's the one I want. Although I'm sure... Mary, Martha, and Lazarus would have been so happy to have their friend Jesus honor them by riding their donkey to Jerusalem. So we must find and how do we find by being open to be called. Be open to hear Jesus said, so send I you. Be open to say, go here, go there. Talk to this person, talk to that person. Go to this village, go to that village. We must bring, pray, release those that he chooses. I know it's a little late, but I'd like to call the, the few young people that are here. If you'll just come just for a few moments here with me. All you young people. These are a part of our cults. And I want you to, to be representing all those cults, the cults we ministered to, these past weeks, the cults that God will be calling like he's been calling you. Now I'd also ask, like to ask the rest of the church if you'll just come and stand behind them. Representing those that have prayed have untied, have helped, have participated one way or another for our cults. I remember some that Sarah had in her Sunday school. They were just barely unborn. And yet her, like others, prayed and kept praying, believed and kept believing. They are and they represent a new generation that here have begun little by little to discover the treasures of his presence. But others that ignore that there is a presence, they only know about church. They only know about Sunday school. They only know about singing. But there's a future. 
And there's a peace that will be needed in that future in the church that will not be attained if there's not mothers. So I need your continued prayers to add now to your prayers the cults that we've found in Asia. But God is calling us to be mother of many cults that are not of our stable. So enlarge your tent. Enlarge your stakes. And as now, some are beginning now to go out, and others will too. There's so many cults that need to be met and released. A generation that will find the peace the church will need in the future. The peace that His presence gives. That they might be found wherever they might be. They might be gathered and brought to the Master. That's what it's about. Not brought to our church. Not brought to our thought or our belief. But brought, released and brought to the Master for him to do whatever he wants with them. That God might send his disciples and his apostles, his anointed ones, to release them. They can't untie themselves. Don't expect. Don't expect them to know how to pray and intercede and even to clean up, clean up after themselves, that's our job. Time and time again to have faith. And one thing I need to tell you and many other mother, mothers of cults that are hearing me, never give up. Never give up. You might say, you don't know my cult. You don't know the rebellions. You don't know. No, but I know him. Never give up. The prodigal son that has a promise has no option not to return. No option. It will be. But he'll need of mothers that will not give up. They get entangled, release them again. They get entangled again, release them again. And lead them to the master. He'll teach them how to not get tied up. And he will keep them released. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Let not your heart be troubled. Your children might have children. It doesn't matter. You're still alive. You're still alive. And as long as you have breath to your last breath, Untie them. Untie them. You as mother have an authority nobody else has. You as a father have authority and your prayer is heard like no other, no other's mother prayer is heard about your children. Who else cares for your children? Who else will cry for your children? Who else will come with all their hearts and say, my God, my God, my son, my son. 
like the Sunamite with her dead son in her arms, saying, my son, my son, my son. Who else can bring before his presence to say, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. She's tied up. I released her and thought she would remain released, but now she's worse released than more tied than before. The life, a mess, their marriage is a mess. Are you looking at the mess? Or is he looking at his promise? Don't give up. Don't give up. Untie them. Untie them. Don't be discouraged. Perhaps the colt will say, I don't want to be untied. I'm happy living the way I'm happy. I'm... But you say, the master has need of you. Because he told me when you were born, the master has need of you. Stop praying for me. I won't. I can't. Because the master has need of you. And he told me so. So I will untie you. I will pray before the master. Rebuke the one that ties you. Leave me alone. Don't pray for me anymore. I know when you're praying. Even the colt says, I don't want to be untied. I'll just tie me up again. I'm no good. I'm too weak. I'm not like you, mama. I'm sure I'll stumble and fall. I don't think the master can use me. The master needs you. And I won't stop. I gave you birth, I gave you life, and that life was to serve the master. Remember, little colt, you are not the one that chooses. He is the one that chooses you and will help you and will strengthen you. And will do what you cannot do. Will change what you cannot change. Because you are his colt. How did he know that mother and that colt was in that little shed, in that little barn, in that little house, in that little village? Yes, he knows those that are him, his. He will not only strengthen you and help you, but he will make you a blessing to the world. This is your burden. The burden church, both here and in the world. For it is the church that can bring them to the master, take them under his wings, under the shadow of the presence of the Almighty. And it's only he that can release them so they might receive the power from on high so that he might use them. So just tell them what Jesus told his disciple. Well, what if they don't want to? Just tell them the master has need of them. Father, Help us, teach us, give us the faith to birth forth many more colts, to untie over and again and never stop believing, lest we've untied other colts and our colts remain tied. Father, Help us to keep our colts under the shadow 
of your wings. That we not say it's done, the work is done, none will be tempted, none will fail, none will have a bout of doubt. Lord, they still need help. We need to stand behind and beside our colts till the day we die. Even if they marry and have children, they are still our colts and need our prayers, need our strength, need our faith. So help us, Lord, to be a mother of nations. be beside the colts in the time of transition from one generation to another and just allow us to see before our eyes close to see the most bound of our colts released that we might be able to say, now I rest in peace knowing that your promise is fulfilled. So Lord, allow us as a church of mothers to shine in this time. And for that, we need you to shine upon us. So Lord, I ask you to bless the mothers and the colts. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord have mercy on you. And the Lord grant you peace. Amen. And amen.